Hello, hello, hello. Right TV Uganda, Youth and Prominence Program, and I am Sarah Mirembe Biamkama, your host. Right TV Uganda is available on all social media platforms, but especially Youth and Prominence Program is a program where we invite young people, ladies and gentlemen, groups, people at parties, people in a classroom setting, people playing games, and we bring you stories, experiences to motivate you, to inspire you, to really challenge you, and to get you up on your feet. Our guest today is Jody Cheyune Kauba. He's right here. Jody, you're most welcome to Right TV Uganda. Thank you very much. I am honored, truly. We are more honored to have you, Jody. First of all, you're a rare species, <laughs> a young man with a lot of talent, a lot of experience. So we know that at Ray TV Youth and Prominence Program, you are going to do us so well. So Jody, as we start our program today, I'd like to ask, who is Jody Cheyune? Where do you come from? When you look at yourself, how could you describe yourself? OK, thank you very much. Good morning, fellow youths out there. Um, Jody Cheyune by name. So I am a 21-year-old man. I'm 21 years old. Yeah. I'm currently in Macquarie University pursuing architecture. I come from a family of three. I'm the first born. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I'm in Macquarie University. This is my place. My home. Wow. So, 21 years old, just tell us something about your family background. So you're born and then these other babies come after you. Are they boys? Are they girls? <laughs> Who are your parents? Where did you go to school? All right. So, um, I come from a family of three, as I've said. I'm the first born. I have two sisters. Mm. One is currently next six vacation. Mm. The other is currently in form two at Gaza High School. Wow. So I studied my secondary in King's College Budo, mm -hmm. primary in City Parent School. And uh, in my high school, I managed to finish it, acquired 20 points. Mm. That's what got me to my career. I'm currently on government sponsorship. Wow, government sponsorship is so rare. You'll tell us about that later on in the program. Definitely. But, but, but back to you. So who... Who are the parents of this wonderful person? Oh, yeah. Um, my dad goes by the name Michael Kaua and my mother, Juliet Kaua. So my dad passed away when I was in senior two. He died of cancer. So my mom has been there for most of this time. And I've also had wonderful uncles who have taken care of me during this, my lifetime. It hasn't been easy, but I've had my struggles my fellow shell struggles as a young man, as a Christian. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> wow, you almost That's forgot that major. one. You'll tell us also about your Christian journey. So those are two packed issues. One, 20 points and on government sponsorship. That one, we want to know the detail. <laughs> and then the other one, you're telling us you're a Christian. So yeah. Jody, as far as you began remembering, understanding in your life, yes. where do you find yourself? What kind of life are you in? Where do you go to school? Where do you live? When you began understanding, we ignore the birth to when you can remember. <laughs> right. <coughs> so about my life. Yeah. So um, in my life, I first of all, I'm saved. I'm a Christian. So yeah. that's the major thing that has kept me. But in my life, I've really been busy. Most of the time, even during vacations, I am busy. I'm a person who likes reading. I put, I put in passion into my reading. I try as much as possible to read as much as possible. You know, they say knowledge is power. But so, it is. Knowledge is power. Yes, yeah. definitely. So I try to acquire as much of it as possible. Then also, um, I'm a person who likes working. I mm -hmm. really don't like being idle most of the time. Mm. There's also another saying, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. So I try as much as possible to keep busy during vacations. I find jobs to do, different jobs to do. I could tell you a few. Yeah, but, but still, uh, that's still also a bit up. Okay. 
So when you begin understanding, which school did you find yourself in? I'm sure it probably it was a kindergarten, <laughs> as far yes. back as you can remember. Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember any teachers being influential in your formative stage? Did you go to Sunday school? Did you go there willingly, or were you actually beaten into Sunday school? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We'd like to hear that, Jody. <laughs> All right, so I attended Sunday school most of my life. Most of the times I go to Sunday school, it would be like being first in the morning. Okay, that's what I felt like. <laughs> yes, and that you're being genuine. You're would, being very genuine. I would feel like I'm being forced every Sunday, get out of bed, go to Sunday school. Then you learn all these things that didn't really make sense earlier in life. <laughs> which is okay, which is very okay. Yeah, so I wake up, go to Sunday school. So in my kindergarten, for my kindergarten, I went to Lina Daycare. I can't really remember much it was. So back, but around Dubaga, I think the yes, name. Yes, yeah, yes. I've seen around that. Dubaga. I've got a, it's a quite a big kindergarten. Yes. It's not it's not these very tiny ones. Wow, you went to Lina. Mm -hmm. Good start. So yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> when I went to Lina, one thing I remember clearly is I feared swimming water, oh. <laughs> which is quite surprising because right now I it's one of my favorite hobbies. Swimming is one of my favorite hobbies. I try oh. as much as possible to do it in my free time. Oh. But back in Lina, I really feared the water so much. Like, that's what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. But it was at Lina that I, I think I learned. I learned swimming also to some extent. It was really young. Yeah. So you first fear the pool, yeah. and then a teacher encourages you. Yeah. And before you know it, you actually can swim. Yeah. <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. Try it out. Then I learned that maybe this is my calling so mm. I picked up swimming I did it a lot in high school at King's College Budo mm. where I was mm. I would go there like every Saturday they would open the swimming pool so I would always head there try to test my skills improve mm. my skills mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah. so from Lena where did you go after Lena I went to City Parents School Ah, you went straight away to city parents. Yeah, right now I think it was. The Don't worry, <laughs> we want to hear the original city parents. Right, the original city parents. What was good at city parents? What was shaping? What contributed to your growth, even academic growth? Right, so at city parents, um, one thing I remember about there, they, were, they used to cane us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that one was a big... A negative. <laughs> it became a lifestyle. You become used to it. <laughs> wow. Ah. Yeah, so one thing I... But it was really, really like... It was a competitive school, like ah. academically. You couldn't really afford to sleep up so much. You had mm. to, I would always aim to be among like the top best stream in the school. Mm -hmm. I would always do my best. I would mm. try to read, read as much as possible, practice, do math numbers. That's how I increase my liking for math by practicing it from city parents. I would like you to say it very clearly to young people out there. You had very good teachers, find they used to cane, but there's something you did as Jody. You mentioned the reading. And you also mentioned the practice in math. And you said that's where your mathematics strength began. Now, Jody, some of us as students think that some people are born knowing mathematics, that for no. them, <laughs> the numbers are already in their head. No. I want you to be very clear about that and tell the young viewer out there, does it just happen? Do some of you have maths in your, in your head? <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'd like to say that for mathematics, we don't really have it in our heads. We just practice. Practice as much as possible. Do numbers. Then if you have somewhere where you can see the answers, also, like try to practice before, then check out the answers, check out the working. That's how you get good at math, by continuous practice. No one's really good at it. Everyone who's good at it practices. So that's what I can say about math. So that's very helpful. That's very helpful out there. So young people, <laughs> nobody is born with numbers in their heads. People sit, try out the workings, and uh, I'm sure many times Jody will tell us maybe he even failed the numbers <laughs> and had to do them again. <laughs> so be encouraged yes. out there knowing that 
they are not numbers in anybody's head. You have to do something about it. So city parents, you pick up the maths, you learn, you try out a few things the teachers are telling you, and they actually work. Yeah. So how did you leave city parents? Did you excel? Did you fail? Um, at the end of city parents, at the end of my stay there, I acquired six aggregates in PLE. It wasn't really what I had expected, but it was good enough. Wow. It took me, uh, I was glad about what I got. Wow. I'm grateful, so surprisingly I got a D2 in math. Surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. But maybe if you hadn't practiced, maybe you'd have had an F, a, a, a grade yeah, six, yeah. maybe a past seven. Yeah. So the six takes you to? King's College, Budo. Mm -hmm. That's where I got from. So you arrive. Senior one. <laughs> Senior one. <laughs> You're the youngest <laughs> class in this huge school. Yeah, with so much potential. Mm -hmm. So much potential. So I come in, of course it was overwhelming, you know, being a, f a Form 1 in such a school where there were all these many classes above you. You saw so you were like the baby in the school. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of ironic coming from being the oldest in primary school to the youngest in secondary school. So here we are in senior one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sometimes I could say that maybe the would people in higher classes would like look down on us being senior one. So sometimes they would force us, you know, buy for me this stuff at the canteen. You using know. your money? <laughs> and yeah, no, <laughs> using that. Okay, they would give you their money <laughs> and okay. send you like you become a, a porter <laughs> sort of. Please I was gracious to enough to Ooh. be given money by them. Wow, they were good enough to give you money. Yeah. Hmm. King's College, but that's a good thing to hear. <laughs> <laughs> also, another thing about the senior one was I had, all, I had cousins in older years. Ah, <laughs> I so one. you were a bit shielded, a bit protected. Yeah. Ah. I had one who was a prefect, so... <laughs> Even a prefect, uh, uh, no, for you, your riding <laughs> Buddha was very good. Not <laughs> <laughs> really. But at time. least. Yeah, it was good. At least. I, you, you had a bit of protection. Yeah. People knew where not to go beyond. Yeah. So you're in Buddha, senior one. From four subjects to how many? Oh, from four subjects, we moved to 14. Mm -hmm. 10 more? 14. <laughs> <laughs> it was Their school to boarding school? This school, oh, I love that transition. You loved it. <laughs> yeah, I loved tell us it. something about it. Something about this school, like mm -hmm. wow, every mo every evening you'd have to leave school, get back home, mm -hmm. do the homework, traffic jam. It was also annoying. Mm -hmm. But now here you were primary. I mean, in a boarding school, you just wake up, walk to where you want, very fast. No traffic jam. Yeah, no traffic jam. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest plus. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. <coughs> so no traffic jam, so you'd wake up, go to class, just walk to class, go and get your meals at the same time. So teachers would understand, you're doing things at the same rate. So getting late to class was really rare. I like the school where there was traffic jam and all that. Sometimes the car would get a puncture. Mm. So and you're late for school? extremely late in that scenario. So yeah, it was really a huge change that... I just loved, I loved the transition. And how about the numbers? In, at your home, you're probably alone or two of you in your room. Uh, and now you're sleeping in this big dormitory. Mm -hmm. And then the meals in school are predictable when <laughs> it's going to be portion and beans and maybe a bun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so quickly help us, show us how can a young person adapt very quickly in a boarding section? So first of all, how I found boarding school, you know, at home I was, we were like three in the house, but then here we were in a dorm, a full dormitory. I love that because I was the only boy in the house. Mm. It was really like lonely for me. <laughs> ah, home. so you found <laughs> friends, yeah. company. Yeah, I found friends. The company was one thing that I really loved about wow. this school. It was wow. a big plus. Wow. Me. So yeah, I found friends there and we managed to survive together. Some of them I kept six years. I remember my decker mate in this one was my roommate in Form 6. Oh, wow. <laughs> we had such a strong bond. So. That, but that also speaks a lot about your character. Yeah. By the time you have a friend right in your dormitory from Senior 1 to Senior 6, yeah. it's amazing, it's amazing. 
Well, this is Jodi Kaube um, uh, Cheyune. I would love to use the Cheyune name a little more. He's yes. so that he becomes architect. Feel free. Kaube. Uh, sorry, architect Cheyune. <laughs> I love that. <coughs> Jodi went to Sunday school. He didn't exactly like it, <laughs> but he admits he had so much to learn there. Jodi went to Lina kindergarten, and one of the things he feared so much was the water, <laughs> but he says he left Lina having <laughs> learned how to swim. So I'm beginning to feel like maybe young people, some of the things you don't exactly like, are actually going, heading you in the right direction. That's a feeling I'm beginning to get. Jodi, how do you make up your mind to become a Christian? Because at some point you, didn't ex you weren't exactly passionate, but along the way, how does Christ come to be a part of your life? I became, Christ became a part of my life in my form for, form mm. for that. Um, it was from that point that I just devoted my life to him. At some, it was a Sunday in form four. I went to chapel, like, as all, as all of us do in Budo, you just go there. Sometimes you sit there passively and just passively listen to the whole sermon. <laughs> <laughs> This time I decided, you know what, <coughs> this time the sermon was so good. It was an ex a pastor from Nigeria, I think. Wow. He had been hosted by our school. So he came to preach. So it was from that point that I picked interest. I was like, wow. My God, this is so, so interesting. Man. This, is so, this has just captivated me. Mm, raise your voice a bit. Yeah, so mm. it was from that point that I decided to just subject my life to Christ. Give my life to Christ. So this happens before mocks? No, this was after mocks. <laughs> Even after mocks. So you yeah. just had a short time to yeah. the final exam? Just before the final exam. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what change? First of all, I believe you come from a Christian family, much as you didn't mention. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we need to first go back and recap <laughs> that. Had you been exposed to God before? Yeah, I'd always been exposed mm -hmm. to God. Both of my parents are Christians. Mm. And most of my extended family are Christians. So I'd been, I'd known about God all my life, but I hadn't really paid attention. I would just be like, okay, yeah, I would go, I would go to the services, I would pray. <laughs> okay, no, I would sit there. Jody, I'm enjoying every bit of it. <laughs> Don't, I'm enjoying every bit of it. I would sit there and sit in the crowd maybe. Sit, I would sit in the crowd sometimes. Or sometimes I would even be given the opportunity to pray. I knew I want to pray. But I wouldn't really take it seriously. I would just say words and without meaning them. At the end of the day, I just say an amen, and that was it. But then, at this point, Christ captured me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. I had always been doing it the wrong way, so this time I started praying well, putting my meaning what I was praying, putting meaning into my prayer. Did you notice any difference after that? Yes, when you began yes. now talking to Christ for yourself and meaning what you said, I, would, I, 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 can't, I can't figure out what happened <laughs> to you, but I want to know, I want to know, before and after. Before and after. Yeah, your experience before and after meeting Christ. Before I met him, I, was, I noticed I was a very paranoid, I was really paranoid in my life, like, I would take everything around me seriously. I would think everyone is attacking me, even in high school. Yet, it was really nothing. I was being paranoid over nothing. So after I found that, after I found Christ, I found peace. I found a kind of peace that just made me feel at ease. So it was from that interaction with Christ that. Oh, wow. And also, I learned that prayer works. Uh-huh. Prayer itself <laughs> so works. So you began to see <laughs> God literally yeah. answer your prayers as a young person. Yeah, I began mm -hmm. to see it from a young age. Mm -hmm. I think I began tithing in a level. Let me just fast forward. I began tithing in okay. a level. Okay. Then I began tithing and I realized that from tithing, God gives us back. Like God provides. I learned that God provides. Even though he sacrificed so much, the Lord provides always. He answers. The Lord provides our, for our sacrifices, however much you sacrifice. So, Jody meets Christ, S4 towards final exams. His relationship with God gets more meaningful. 
he finds his own peace, not peace through his mother, not peace through his teachers, but his own peace coming from directly from God, and he begins to experience the power of prayer. And then at a level, he says, actually, that's when he began to tithe. Some adults are not paying <laughs> tithe. <laughs> I'm so amused. Some adults are not paying tithe. But he says that when he began to tithe, he began to notice God do amazing things. God began to provide. Wow, Judy. <laughs> if I asked you to preach for one minute, what would you say? Just one minute. <laughs> if, you, if you asked me to preach. Yeah. To a young person, by the way, don't think about that. The mature women like me, you ignore us. Just tell a young person about Christ. Just tell them about Christ. I'll tell you that Christ provides. Christ provides. However much you think that maybe in tithe, from what I've seen, tithe has been my main eye opener. It has, it has helped me see what the Lord does. So I noticed from tithing that I actually gained more. I actually started gaining more, much more than I used to get before I started tithing. So I learned that the Lord is the provider. The Lord provides. I also learned that... Um, so do you want them to come to Christ because the Lord provides or there's something more about Christ? There's something more about Christ. Uh-huh, just say it. Just Christ, that in a few seconds. Christ loves you. Christ died on the cross for your sins. That was another thing that captured me. He mm. died on the cross for our sins. We are all sinners. We don't deserve his love. But he died for us. And that's a reason why we should really put our faith in him. We should put faith in him. Thank you so much, Jody. You are already doing us so well. I told you you'd really bless us at Right TV, Thank Youth you. and Prominence Program. Thank you. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Jody has told us how he met Christ, and he is emphasizing that we are all sinners. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But guess what? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us at the cross. We are still with Jody. We are still with Jody at Right TV, Uganda Youth and Preeminence Program. Young people inspiring other young people, encouraging them, telling them wonderful things and how to keep your way right and excel. Thank you. Pray in the scripture. I mean, that's the point of the Bible, the scriptures. To use them even as in your prayer and in your daily life. Not mm -hmm. just in reading, but in <coughs> your daily life. Like Things like forgiveness. You must learn to forgive more often. In this life, people will always be there to wrong you, but as long as you have the scripture with you, you always know it's the right thing to do. Then also in reading, I used to read to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. It had most of the scriptures mm. that you need to know about <laughs> understanding. 